Hello, uh, apologies if you can't see me uh, beyond the podium, that's life for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some of you may know me from Twitter as at FunSizeSues, the least professional Twitter handle in the world. It's stuck now, so that's a sad thing. Uh, some of you may know me from getting excited about stationery. Uh, these are all valid things. Uh, this is me, I'm Suze, and I'm a nanoscientist. Uh, so I thought I'd start off, no, I know, on brand, it's great. <laughs> Uh, so I thought I'd start with uh, talking about me. So, um, I did an undergrad in chemistry, I then did a master's in analytical chemistry, and then I did a PhD in material science and engineering. Um, technically physics, but it's fine, you know, someone has to do that. Um, and so I am now an academic, so I actually teach in an engineering department now. I've recently moved to the University of Surrey, having served my time at Imperial for three and a half years. Oh, this is recorded. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> <coughs> so, <laughs> come to those challenges later. Uh, but I thought I'd talk about some of the other stuff that I do uh, as well. So I'm a science communicator, I do live lectures, demo lectures, I do stuff on TV uh, and I write for a couple of magazines, for Standard Issue magazine and for Forbes. Um, and given that earlier this week I gave my first lecture to our new engineers on forces by making them do pirouettes, um, this is still by far the most cringy thing I've had to do this week. Um, and this is one of the problems. I think talking about ourselves perhaps as women is something we don't do very well. Um, it's been mentioned already by the brilliant people that have joined me um, and will be joining me on this panel, um, but I think that's one of the things that we need to do more of. I think maybe women need to talk about themselves a bit more because it's a horrible thing to have to do and it doesn't come naturally. And I know we hate gender stereotyping, but stereotypes seem to be a way of making sense of patterns that we see. And so lots of people have reported that women don't put themselves forward for things. This is why places like the BBC run schemes for women to come on as experts, because if you were to ask a woman to come on the news and talk about something as an expert in their field, it's highly likely in their experience that the woman will say, oh, do you know what, no, I didn't do my PhD in that very specific area of science, uh, but I know a guy that did. He's a professor of so-and-so. And so as much as these people are trying with their own agendas to address this gender imbalance and this misre misrepresentation, I suppose, of all genders in science and engineering reporting, we're not doing them any favours um, in that aspect. So I thought I'd talk about some of the challenges that I've personally faced as a woman in academia. Now the first thing is the Louboutins. I'm horrendously girly. And for a long time, I actually tried to dampen that down. And I was really miserable doing that. That was a horrible thing to have to hide because the sparkle just wants to seep out. Um, <laughs> and it kind of does eventually. And when it did, it kind of did in quite an explosive manner. And all of the chaps that I'd been working with suddenly thought, who is this monster? But you know what? Within a couple of weeks, they got used to it. But a lot of women do face this problem that in a very male-dominated discipline, we can't necessarily be ourselves. I remember being at the Royal Society for Diversity Day a couple of years ago, and um, a chap from Rolls-Royce was saying, do you know what though, when we employ people, we employ people because we want them to be them. So if we're employing a woman, we want to employ her, you know, for all the qualities that she has. We don't want her to turn up and be a man. We want her to be the person that she is. Um, so that's really important to remember. You've got to be yourself, I think in this discipline, and we've got to encourage others and give them the support and the framework to be able to do that. We've got the leaky pipe analogy as well, and the leaky pipe analogy, if anybody doesn't know, is that the higher up you go in academia, industry, generally in STEM, um, there are fewer and fewer women. We seem to just sort of disappear and fall by the wayside, and what's happening to us? Who knows? We go into science communication mostly. Um, <laughs> There's, uh, there's the work-life balance, which is represented by these pebbles here. Uh, and that's quite a difficult thing to be able to manage, I think, for everybody, but sometimes particularly for women, because I think a lot of the times we get burdened, and I shouldn't say burdened because it's a horrible thing to have to say, but if there's a women in engineering event and you're the only woman in your department or the only woman that has said yes to these things before, then you tend to be wheeled out 
sort of Jeremy Bentham-like as that token woman that will go and speak. And actually, it can be a lot more pressure on women in science to have to be representing your people at all of these things. Um, so that's quite a challenge as well. The sort of lack of encouragement, I suppose, that starts off at such an early age for women to get into STEM um, it is a real problem. There's the whole Let Toys Be Toys campaign, but I remember um, a friend of ours, Andrew Holding, I think a few of you know him, he was saying that I think it was one of his daughters was playing with these profession cards, and you had to match a profession um, to the picture of the person doing the profession. And because they are brilliant parents, in this particular deck, the doctor was a woman. And I think one of his daughters was so insistent that that had to be a nurse, and she was probably two or three at the time. Where on earth has that come from in such a, a positive, you know, gender-aware, um, sort of STEM-aware background for parenting? Who knows? But there are ways that this seeps into kids' cultures. So we've got that as a challenge as well. We've got this lack of role models. Um, this is good old Marie Curie. We know and love her. There was a survey done maybe last year or the year before where people were asked to name a female scientist or engineer. And out of sheer desperation, half the people said Isambard Kingdom Brunel because they'd run out <laughs> of women. And if we're running out of women, that's not great. And there's only so many times that poor Marie Curie is gonna be spinning in her grave thinking, not that bloody photo of me again, you know? So we've got to potentially look beyond that. Um, there's the sphere, so that's a little boo in the corner my future kids will blatantly look like. Um, there is an awful lot of fear. I think imposter syndrome is something that maybe affects women a bit more than men. And maybe it leads into this confidence thing that we don't, oh, horrible stereotyping, paint that on. But, you know, again, this happens for a reason. So maybe we've got to address those reasons and find out exactly what it is about the way that we have been taught before um, or, or the culture that we have done, our undergrads or postgrads in, um, and maybe start to address that. Um, and we've also got the, the saying yes to everything, um, which I think we try and do in an attempt to make our careers as well-rounded and as sort of positive and impactful as possible. And I'm not saying everybody doesn't do this, regardless of their gender, but I think sometimes women can get burdened with the communication stuff or the pastoral care stuff because we're women and we have boobs and surely that's just something we love to do. Um, I really like the I hate kids slide, whoever had that earlier. That was a joy. I've talked about challenges, but I'm gonna use exactly the same pictures to talk about positive steps that are being made. So actually I have to say these days, Things have changed in the little time that I've been working in STEM. I've seen new cohorts of undergraduates come in, and they very much are themselves, and they are feminine or not, you know. <laughs> the one thing that worries me is that when we try and champion women in science, we expect them to be perfect, you know. They have to be perfectly made up. They have to look totally feminine. I actually do look super feminine today, I just realised. But it's a science dress, so it's okay. Um, we, they kind of portray this image that you have to have it all. But actually, a lot of people don't relate to that. I wouldn't relate to somebody that has just immaculate nails and hair that's coming in to say, come and do what I do, because it's intimidating. So I think we need to be realistic um, in our sort of inclusivity of people, particularly when we're going into schools and things. The leaky pipeline analogy is being addressed through schemes like Athena Swan. So the <sighs> Athena Swan Charter, bless you, the Athena Swan Charter, <laughs> Um, is something that universities and departments separately are trying to sign up to, and they're agreeing to make positive changes to support women and mothers and carers as well in their workplace. So it's important that actually it's not just about gender, it's about making the workplace more diverse uh, and more inclusive of people that may be faced with different challenges to the usual middle-aged white male that we probably see in STEM. I'm not saying they have it easy either. That's tough to, you know, tweed is hard to come by these days. Um, so the work-life balance, again, is something that people do get more training on. My department, having moved universities and institutions, possibly one of the best things I've ever done, we have a head of department that encourages standing desks. 
He's trying to get us to go out for group walks at half past one every day so that we actually leave our department and get some fresh air. And we're not allowed to talk about work. I mean, it's completely mad. If we're there at six o'clock on a Friday, we're enforced to go to the pub. This is a whole new culture, and it's something that, again, has its own issues, because not everybody can go to the pub at six on a Friday. But it's positive steps to address the, the work-life balance. There are schemes like Let Toys Be Toys, or Science Girl, and things like that, grassroots organisations that are trying to go, we don't like what's going on in toys. We don't like that Lego is being labelled for boys, because what is that about? Can girls not build things too? Um, don't even get me started on the whole pre-prescribed Lego sets as well. What? No. No. Use your brains. Use your imagination. Marie Curie, as a role model, thankfully we have lots more positive role models than that. Um, if you're stuck for people to find, then do have a look at the Ada Lovelace Day books that people have written. Um, we've all collaborated. Well, I've had the privilege of actually writing a chapter about the lady I screamed about earlier, uh, Stephanie Quolek, because I'm a big fangirl of hers. But finding your own role model is quite important. Mine is actually a man. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that Mark Miodovnik had sat me down three years ago for lunch and said, please don't leave academia, I wouldn't still be in it. Um, so he's gone from being my science hero to my friend and a huge mentor. So thank you, Mark, uh, for taking your time to do that when you're quite busy. Um, what's terrifying is that I think actually we're all role models for people and that's a horrible thing to have to deal with but maybe it's something that we should own a bit more and realize a bit more um, because if we're going into schools or colleges and championing them to get into science and engineering and technology and maths they're going to potentially be looking up to us as well um, so I guess it's not being afraid of that and owning it a little bit more than we do um, the work life, uh, sorry, the balancing of all the tasks as well is something we, we have mentors at work now and we have various schemes that we can go on that help us to manage our workload and our time management. Um, this didn't exist before because it was just presumed that particularly in academia you just got on with it and if you couldn't then you couldn't hack the pace. Um, that's not true, it's just a horrible myth that nobody ever really challenged. Uh, so I think positive steps are being made there. The imposter syndrome, I think we're slowly starting to deal with that. But we've got to champion each other. Um, there was a great thing that I read recently on the BBC News website about Obama's female sort of members uh, of his panels where they amplify each other's ideas. So if a lady, and if there aren't that many women in a meeting, but if one of them makes a suggestion and it's overlooked, it's the role of the other women to take that on and repeat it, and repeat it and repeat it until it's heard. But that doesn't exclusively have to be for women. It should be the responsibility of men as well. I think it was maybe Abby that said that the people that need to make these decisions about change are up at the top, and a lot of the times in STEM, these are men. So it's great that we have women here, but I'm even happier that there are some guys in this audience tonight, and I think it's a pretty balanced audience as well. So, the words that my boyfriend dreads, let's make a plan. Let's stop talking about all our problems. Let's actually do stuff about this. So I'm really hoping that from all the brilliant ideas that my fellow future imminent panelists um, have come up with today, and some of maybe the schemes that I've mentioned as well, Let's stop talking about it. We know it's a problem. But let's actually, each one of us, go out and do something about it. And I know we're very much preaching to the converted that are here today. But if we can, each of us, get two people to make a plan, to promise to do something following this, to make this change happen, so that in 10 years or 20 years, we don't need the Women's Engineering Society we don't need Ada Lovelace Day because it will just be an unspoken thing that science and technology and engineering and maths is for everyone. Cheers.